In this video, I will give you a general clue on how to go ahead to write the two essays requested on the call for application of the GCAP Mobility Program 2024. That is the fourth item when you are reading the call for application. Well, the first essay reads, academic expectations and interests, professional expectations and perspective of returning to the country of origin. When you are talking about academic expectations and interests, of course, you are talking about the objective. You try to define the objective. So from defining the objectives, it takes you to the interests because that's what you really want. That's your desire, right? So you are expecting what? To acquire a new skill. You expect to meet new people, new culture, learn things that are really different from where you come from. That is the expectation. You are expected to meet qualified teachers. You are expected to meet a very you know, robust structure, something that is a little bit different from uh, what you uh, are used to, you're expected to, you know, develop yourself, not just um, academically, but socially also. You're expected to do so many things, okay? And these are also part of your interests, okay? You are interested in understanding maybe something specific. It's, is it uh, social science? Is it a computer science? Uh, is it um, a mathematical science? Or whatever it might be. So that is your academic interest. But you should always, you know, specify the objective, okay? Because the objective takes you to how you can develop this uh, part of the essay. Well, when you are talking about the professional expectations, of course, is the skills at the end of the the learning process, you are supposed to acquire a skill. And that skill is, is to be applied somewhere. So you are studying a marketable course. You are studying a course that can give uh, people maybe access to something new. So you can talk about the professional expectations. You are expected to, at the end of the course, have a skill that would solve a problem in your society, right? You can state the problems. You can make it very interesting, actually. <laughs> I just feel like applying and writing something. The topics are really interesting. Now, the last item for the first essay is perspectives for returning to the country of origin. Of course, after the course, you are expected to go back to your country and take what you've learned. So what are the perspectives? You can state maybe a problem that you would be able to solve in your society that that would be very interesting when you are writing up your essay right so uh i believe that there are so many problems that uh, you must have observed and you would like to study something that uh, maybe uh, kind of offers a solution to such a problem so it would be very interesting when you state that if there are more than uh, five problems, 10 problems, just one problem, you can state it, but try to make it very clear, okay? Essay number two, justification for selection. Explain why the topic is important and relevant. Discuss any gaps in existing research that your study aims to address. Well, gap is basically a problem. Usually a problem is a question. Of course, that's what you want to answer. So during your research, what you are basically doing is filling the gap. Highlight potential contributions your research could make to the field. Central theme and research problem. Clearly state the main theme or focus of your research. Define the specific research problem or question your study seeks to answer. Explain why this problem is worth investigating and how it fits within the broader context of the field. The limitation and justification of the object of study. When we are talking about the delimitation and justification of object of study, we are trying to make it specific. You have a topic. It's maybe generic. Let's say study of population. It's a very general topic, okay? But we can specify 
what kind of population are we trying to study? Is it the old, the young, you know, the women, the men, the, you know, we need to specify. So that is what we call delimitation. You are trying to specify and uh, you put, you know, you write about it. So that is basically what they mean. Define the scope and boundaries of your study. Justify why you chose this particular subject or study. Example, specific population, time, period, geography, etc. Discuss any limitation or constraints that may affect your research. Literature review. Summarize relevant research and scholarly literature related to your topic. Identify key theories, concepts, and findings that will inform your study. Highlight gaps, contradictions, and unsolved issues in the existing literature. Methodological process. Describe the research design and methodology you will use to address your research problem. Explain how you will collect and analyze data. Justify your chosen method and discuss any ethical considerations. Timeline. Outline the sequence of tasks and activities required to complete your research. Provide estimated time frames for each stage of research process from literature review to data of analysis and writing. When you are trying to write the timeline, let's call it timetable, right? It's easier to understand talking about timetable. Basically, if you are coming for masters, then you have two years. It means you just have 24 months, okay? So uh, if you put it in years, it's gonna be a little bit congested. So try to make it in months. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, you have 12 months. And within this 12 months, you distribute the activities. If you don't know about the activities, you can research. You know, that's the general uh, way that they carry out the master's activities here in Brazil. And you can draft it. You can imagine it. Okay, the first uh, six months, I will study maybe the courses, right? You do the subjects. And at the same time, you might be doing some research like reading so you can put uh, maybe talk about reading of articles you can put it as referencing so bibliographical references and you know subjects so you put it in the first six months then the next six months you can start talking about the development of your project right maybe you are going to do something in the lab you're going to do something in the field or whatever it might be but of course you will continue to study so you can put that there okay uh, if you happen to maybe talk to one researcher he might give you an outline of how to do that too so it's also an option right but since doctorate takes like four years you can divide it in years so the first year you can talk about the subjects you can talk about uh, uh, bibliographical references you can talk about maybe initiating your uh, your studies too okay and you can it's very important also both for the masters and doctorate to talk about participation in events right so when you have already finished you know uh, studying some of the core subjects related to your course then you start like participating in events you start article writing so these are all uh, part of the process okay so you can put them when you start like having free time not free time you know in <laughs> in the real sense but okay you can have st you start having free time after you've done that's the subjects okay so for the doctorate you can start from the second year you can start putting like uh, uh, participation in events writing of articles you know uh, you know all these activities there so the third year the fourth year are the same you put it in table if you want to do it but if you decide to put it in lines you can do it also write it in form of uh, uh, paragraphs right you divide the years 
and then you put them if you decide to make it on a t in a tabular form that's perfect bibliographical references list all sources cited in your proposal using the appropriate citations example apa mla include both primary and secondary sources that you have informed talking about the bibliographical references we have standards we have the apa we have the mla we have several others okay it's good that you look for a platform i use the google academics right i put the uh, let's say the let's say the heading of the article there and then it gives me options of how i would save that uh, reference okay so i copy that and then i paste it i don't need to change so many things but sometimes there is one or two things that you can you have to correct right so that uh, it doesn't look like um, kind of uh, scattered or not standardized so you can do that correction but uh, it's good to look for a platform some use web of science i used to use web of science uh, to get the but it's quicker you know when you put it on google uh, academics it comes up there so i hope this little information helps right best of luck